Yeah, welcome here at uh, Seismic Radio, or BPN Radio, and uh, maybe even Crusader Radio. Um, <clears throat> it's um, we're going to have a look at, uh, at at an interesting scripture, and I, 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 it's it's in the Old Testament. If you are uh, not too familiar with the Old Testament, and it's the Book of Proverbs. So the Book of Proverbs. It is just after the Book of Psalms before the book of Ecclesiastes, again, really interesting book. And then we've got Song of Solomon and Isaiah, and Jeremiah and the prophets and so on. So uh, the book of Proverbs is just a book of wisdom. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's fascinating. You can, you can use it and you can um, make use of it just the way, you know, you are in the New Testament, you don't need to, to, to take anything away or add anything to it. It's, it's again, sometimes when you read the Old Testament, you read um, um, things in the, the Pentateuch too, like in the first um, <clears throat> the first five books and you read about the law, then, then obviously some of the stuff is applicable uh, for us today, moral law or <clears throat> some of the, um, uh, the things which are described. But for example, um, again, some things are not applicable for us. So, um, ceremonial law for example you know where it talks about the temple service and what you have to do with the temple or uh, life in the desert where you have to to do certain things there they're not applicable to us today and it's, it's very important to to understand this otherwise the bible can become become very very difficult but when you look at uh, proverbs a lot of it is just uh, it's just very easy to you know transfer it, to the theology of the New Testament and the way the New Testament works. Okay, let's let's go through it. I've got um, if you are watching it on on YouTube, um, <clears throat> um, I've got um, some software here. The software is free to use. It's called eSort. So if you go on Google or somewhere and you type in e, so the letter e uh, dash sort or e minus sort. Uh, you can actually uh, download it yourself and you've got like loads of Bible versions which are free to use which are in the public domain also books which are in the public domain or commentaries which are in the public domain which you can download and you can you can make the most of it okay let's go right into Proverbs and I want to make a start to chapter 3 I thought it's an amazing chapter and it's a chapter which we need to which we need to cover here on um, on seismic radio uh, here on the the YouTube channel Okay, we're going to make a start in verse 1. It says, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. Okay, so we talked about the law a little bit before. Which law is it? Is it the law of Moses? Moses gave to the Israelites. Or is it the law of the Sermon on the Mount, which is a lot stricter and stronger? Um, um, basically, when you are a Christian, and when you, when you follow Jesus Christ, uh, the Holy Spirit has been poured out into your life. Um, we, we can see the New Testament and we can see that the way we should walk is we should walk by the Spirit. Yeah? Not by the letter of the law, but by the Spirit. And uh, when we read John and, uh, and others, our law should be motivated by love. Um, it's, it's very, very important. So it's not about, you know, it's, it's obviously it's about treating people right, to be honest, to be truthful. It's about, you know, not stealing, not murdering. Um, not uh, being nasty to people, but it should be motivated by love. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is the biggest law, uh, the, the second biggest law after love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind, with everything you have. Love God and then love your neighbor as yourself. So they're the, the two big laws and they're, they're really the ones which we should keep as Christians and which, which we should follow and, and observe. And if we do this, uh, then everything will fall into place. But there's one big problem, and that is that deep down in our heart, we are rotten. The Bible talks about it, that the heart is deceitful above all things. And and we are deceitful and, and very often delusional as well, self-delusional. We think that we are great people and that everything is fine. And yet deep down, when we you know just have a quiet moment and we allow God to speak to us, we can see the fallacy of our thinking and, and also when God starts pointing out where, where there's arrogance, hatred, uh, where we despise other people for no, for no real reason, uh, where we judge people, you know, 
with the wrong judgment. It's 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 okay to judge people, and the the New Testament talks about judging other people if necessary, but we should do it justly and righteously. And and we are we are off the truck all the time. I think the the more you uh, walk with Christ, the older you become in Christ as a Christian, the more you realize how rotten we really are, and that there is no hope. But there's no hope within us, but there's hope with Christ. And there's hope with God pouring out his Holy Spirit into our lives and leading us to a better life. So if we walk in the Spirit, we will do better. If we walk in the Spirit, we will slowly become better people, not out of ourselves, but it is by the power and by the mercy and by by God's direction, by God's inter intervention in our lives. Okay, so we shouldn't forget the law of God. So basically what we should ask ourselves, what does God want us to do? Yeah, I, I always think of the Lord's Prayer where we, where we say, your will be done as it, is in <clears throat> as it is in heaven, so on earth. So this implies God's will is not always done on earth. And, and I can make an argument quite simple. And this is that, uh, you know, God has given the earth to man. Man has handed it over to the devil. And we are now operating or moving around in the kingdom of the devil. And when you look at death, destruction, lies, deception, that's not the will of God. And this will is not, not done here on earth. And I had to think about, um, sort of I was um, moved away from work and um, I'm sort of looking after uh, my brother who's in a, in a very, very bad state. And, and um, so I've got a lot of time on my, my hands, you know, when I'm not looking after him. And, and sort of when I was going around in, in my former hometown in, uh, in Germany, what I've seen is I've seen a lot of people who are really in dire straits, a lot of crazy people, a lot of people talking to themselves, a lot of people just being drunk from morning till evening, a lot of people just not being able to cope with life. And, and one thing sort of I notice is if you forget God and you forget to do the will of God, if you're not with God, and, and I think society as a whole has moved away a long way from, from where, where, where we should be and where God wants us to be, then there's insanity coming into, into the hearts of people and people lose the plot, they lose track, they are really suffering. They may be dependent on, on, on medication to try and keep them going you know, mentally and, um, and, and try and keep them out of, out of really hard and difficult, um, you know, grievous circumstances, you know, of the soul you know, rather than, you know, uh, ma materially. And, and that's one thing I've seen here. I think materially a lot of people are okay. But a lot of people are really, really struggling with life. That, that's what I noticed sort of whilst I was here and sort of talking to people and finding sort of finding out about people and their, you know, what they've been through in life. And it's, it's really difficult. The answer is, is very simple, <clears throat> maybe too simple and too simple for people. And it's simply in surrendering to God and surrendering to Jesus Christ and seeking God to give them a way to go, to move them on, to, to let them walk in the way God wants them to go. Uh, again, coming back to the Lord's Prayer, um, <clears throat> that God's will be done as it is in heaven, so on earth. Now in heaven, God's will is going to be done because he is there. He's the ruler of heaven. Earth has been, has been given over to the devil, you know, and man is giving it over to the devil. And the further we move away from God, the more power the devil gets. And that's his kingdom. That's the kingdom of the prince of this world. And, um, and may I sort of take it one step further. So if you decide that God's will is done in your life, this will reduce the power, you know, of the madness, the insanity, the evil and all that that is going on here on earth. And, um, and things will be, will be a little bit straighter. Will we be able to change the world? Will we be able to, you know, turn the world around to make it a better place and a good place? Is it all about climate change and, um, you know, being green and all that, or is it uh, is it about something else? Now, uh, what I want to say about this is, yes, you will be able to change the world. You will be able to make a difference, but that is in your little cosmos, you know, with the people around you, the people you are dealing with. If you come to Christ and your character, your soul, your spirit get refined through um, through the Holy Spirit and through 
uh, shall I say, God's judgment has been poured out on Jesus Christ, as your sin has been forgiven, as the power of sin in your life is reduced, um, then you will make a difference in your little sphere with the people around you, with those who are, you know, your workmates, <coughs> your relatives, your family. Um, they would see a difference and, and you will make a difference in your little in your little area, the little cosmos you you are in <clears throat> and uh, in the little sphere where you touch other people's lives. Obviously, if there are a lot of us, um, if there are a lot of us, you know, following Christ, the, the, the love of God poured out in our hearts and enabling us to love those who are unlovable, who are horrible, <laughs> enabling us to be kind to those who don't deserve kindness through the mercy God has given to us so we can extend this mercy to other people, then um, things will be better. Things will be better all the way around and there's no, no question about it. And, um, and obviously, hopefully, people will, will realize that the power of God is with us in our lives and that they will come to a point in their lives where they say to God, your will be done as it is, on, as it is in heaven, so on earth. And they will also say, so in my life. And um, um, just to make the point, I mean, the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus says that, you know, talks about the narrow way and the broad way, the broad way where the masses go on and they find the destruction and the narrow way, which leads to eternal life. But then right at the end, he says, and few will find it. We know this, this is a prophecy. Only very few people will find this way. And, and so this world will always be doomed to destruction. We will never come to a point where the vast majority of people are servants of the living God. I mean, we've got a figure, I think it's about 2 billion people are supposed to be Christians. When we look at real Christianity, we are probably going to <clears throat> to maybe 10% of this figure, or even lower than that. I don't know. God knows the exact figure. He knows those who are His. But uh, but yeah, it's, it's only few who will find the way. And it's important that you find this way too. The narrow way. <clears throat> so we don't forget the law of God. And we keep God's commandments in our hearts. And the, the key ones us are to love God and to love our neighbor. And then it says here, they shall at length of days, a long life and peace. So that's important, isn't it? Peace to you. Long length of days, yeah, a long life and peace. So that is the promise here that if we stick to God, God will give us a long life and uh, peace. And, and the peace of God is, is amazing. I never understood it before I became a Christian. It's a long time ago. I was 16 when I gave my heart to Christ. Uh, before I didn't have peace in my heart, I was always in turmoil. doesn't mean that I'm never in turmoil now, but it's a different type of turmoil. Overriding it all is the peace of God. And the peace of God is beyond understanding. Jesus says that, uh, that he will give us his peace, not as the world gives peace, but it's going to be the peace of God he'll give to us. Now, that, that's a completely different peace. It's a peace which goes deep down in your heart that when and if you are shaken by the circumstances in this world, it's not going to destroy you. It's not going to give you a hard time, but it'll, um, but it'll, give, you, but it'll give you assurance that everything is going to be okay, that God is in control, that even though things around you go upside down, tipsy-turvy, God is still in control. And, and the Bible even says in one instance, a thousand will fall to your right, a thousand will fall to your left, but it will not come anywhere near you. It will not come near you. And, and that is the status we are in God, that even though they will destroy your, your flesh, they will destroy your body, um, but you will be saved. You will be okay. So it can, can go to the uttermost, to the extreme. But God is still going to be there. He's uh, still with you. I, I have to think about this when I... When I look at the, the story of a Romanian guy called um, Richard Wurmbrandt and uh, there's another guy, Dimitri Dudoman, both from Romania and both have been through through persecution and, and they tell stories what was happening to them in persecution. That they were the vilest, the most wicked, the most horrible people persecuting those guys and yet God was with them, even in the worst of... Um, of, of times. They tried to destroy them, yet God would restore them. He would allow them to go so far, but they couldn't go any further. 
Okay, so long life as well. Um, there, there is also an element, if you live a good life, if you live a holy life, if you've got this peace of God in your heart and you've got absence of conflict, you know, deep, serious conflict, a lot of illnesses, diseases will not even happen. And, and there's some medical stuff about this that uh, if you are at peace, um, uh, your immune system is improved and a lot of bad stuff is not, not going to come to you. But it's important. I mean, it doesn't mean that, you know, if you are a Christian and you are right with God and you, you'll never get cancer or anything like that. It doesn't mean this. yeah. But if you get it, even then in those circumstances, you will still have the peace of God and you can deal with it. You know, when your time is over and you have run your race, it's not over. You know, you're not going to hell. You're not, you know, this is not what you have. You know, you are... Uh, moving in dimensions of eternity as you are with Christ. Um, you have got a job to do here, and this job can consist out of prayer, it can consist out of proclaiming the gospel, it can consist out of getting active within the church, within the kingdom of God. And again, I don't know what it is, but as you walk with God and you, you, uh, you live with God, you will know what God wants you to do, and you will know for sure that God wants you to go one way or the other. Okay, <clears throat> you shall find favor and good understanding. All oh, right, let's let's have a look. I missed one one verse here. This is verse three. We are now. Let not mercy, mercy and truth forsake you. Tie them around your neck. Write them upon the tablet of your heart, and you shall find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Okay, so we have got two aspects here, and they are mercy and truth. Truth. So what about mercy? Mercy is when you deserve bad, but good is given to you. Yeah, and, and this is basically what's happened to us all. You know, we <clears throat> are all sinners. Yeah, we are all doomed to hell, to hell fire, to separation from God, to eternal torment. But because Jesus died and he shed his blood for you and for me, and he took upon himself the punishment you and I deserve, our slate is clean. And that is the mercy of God. Uh, again, you know, very often as I go through life, I can look at my life, even as a Christian, and I know I've done many mistakes, I've done terrible mistakes. And yet God had mercy on me. He had mercy on me and it, I didn't get punished for the stuff I did. Somehow I got away with it. And, uh, and it's just by the mercy of God. It's just by the goodness of God. Um, and um, the other one is truth as well. Yeah? And, and again, we should, you know, if God has mercy on us, we should be merciful towards others, to people who make mistakes with us. Sometimes people offend us deeply. Sometimes they hurt us. Sometimes they try to destroy us. Now, the natural reaction is that we get hatred towards those people and we are longing for revenge or for justice. Even if it's not revenge, but just, just justice. That whatever these people, whatever wrong these people have, have done to us, that is done to, that, to them as a, as a matter of justice and, uh, and uh, satisfaction. But we should have mercy on these people the same way God has had mercy on us. Especially if people realize that they have done wrong to us and they come to us and they, they, they seek an, you know, reconciliation or they want to apologize. Maybe not using the words, but they just want to be kind to us and they want to let bygones be bygones. We should be big enough by the mercy of God, you know, that is being shown to us, uh, to let bygones be bygones, to forget about things they have done to us. And to, to give people another chance, a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, uh, a 70 times 70 chance yeah, to, uh, to get right with us and um, to, uh, to move on with them. The next one is truth. And, and it's, it's an interesting thing. When I look at this word, where is truth? Um, Pilate said, what is truth? When Jesus talked about it, what is truth? And, and I can sort of understand this, especially when you go sort of in this. I, I used to work in management for uh, for 12 years, a period of 12 years. And uh, to keep the business afloat, very often you are pushed in a, and it's not good. You're pushed in a way where uh, where you sign bits of paper or you, uh, you know, do certain bits of accounting, which does not reflect the truth anymore, but it just makes the business look good. And I understand that this is happening all over. And, and the temptation to fall for it is very big, even if you are a Christian. So we should find truth and we should love truth. 
and we should invite truth into our lives. I mean, Jesus says of him himself that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to God than through him. No one comes to the Father except through, through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So true life is only found in him, but he is also the truth. As you invite truth in your life, as you embrace truth, you embrace Jesus Christ. It's, it's very, very important. I, I tell you one thing, the temptation in this world, you know, to be economical with the truth is very, very big. Uh, I've, I've done some work in Africa and, and one thing I learned very quickly uh, whilst I was in Africa, that the whole system is just just built around corruption. Corruption is just part of your job. If you do a job, they, they pay you a wage, but there is the expectation that a certain amount of the wage you are owed, you take or you gain through corruption. And and it's, it's not good. It's not good at all. It, it cripples society <coughs> and it cripples uh, the economy in Africa. And it's the same in, 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 in the Eastern Bloc countries. Um, so from what I understand from the Ukraine and from Russia, it's the same scenario and lots of other countries as well, where, where this is just part of society and it's embedded into society. So how much more is it and how much more brilliant is it if people perceive you as somebody who is truthful? If you give them a price, you know, in business, that's a price. There's no hidden cost. There's no add-on. There's no little clause in the contract that will uh, cause a lot of problems for people afterwards. So we should, as Christians, embrace mercy and embrace truth wholeheartedly. Tie them around our neck. Write them upon the tablet of our hearts. Let them be part of our lives. Let it be a lifestyle for us. We are truthful. We are not people of flattery. We are not talking around the bush. We are not talking a lot of rubbish. But what we are saying is truthful and it is correct. Um, in the same way that we have got mercy. So if people do wrong... We will have mercy and we will forgive. And um, and it's interesting as well. And we will we will find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man as well. So it's a bit like, you know, if you've got a bunch of employees and, and I've been there, I've been in management, I've been on the top end looking down, trying to find out what's going on with the organization. Um, I hoped the people who, who I was working with, they would understand that being truthful to me would not give them uh, a disadvantage, yeah? but on the contrary, would give them an advantage. But if you are an employee, employer and you get people who always paint a pretty picture, but the picture is quite grim underneath, um, initially you will like those pretty picture painters and 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 you will, you will have them around you, but in time you will realize there's a problem. Whatever these people say, you can subtract half of it and um, and it, it will not get you anywhere. On the contrary, it will probably endanger the business and bring it down. But if you've got some people who are, you know, the truth sayers and they tell you the truth, you know, if something is not right, they tell you it's not right. If something is bad, they tell you it's bad. If something is really bad and actually needs to be taken, they tell you it's really, really bad and they don't try to, to glamorize it. The same about their work. If they've done a good job, they'll tell you if they've done a bad job, they might tell you as well and maybe give you a reason why it's been happening. Yeah. But at least, you know, you can rely on these people. And as time goes on, uh, the pretty picture painters, um, they will be um, more or less ignored. But the people who are truthful, they will be relied upon. And so it's very important to be truthful if you can and to bind truth around your neck. And you will find favor in the sight of God and man. Tr trust in, uh, I'm going to use the, uh, the term, the word, which I believe is the name of God. Trust in Yahweh with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Okay, this, can I highlight this? I'm going to try and highlight this. Yeah. And um, for the people on YouTube or who see the video, Trust in Yahweh with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. This is a temptation. And I've, I mean, I'm, I'm in the, the, the last third of my life. Am I in the last third? I'm just trying to think possibly, yeah. Um, I mean, I believe Jesus is coming back soon. So maybe I'm right at the end of my existence here on earth. But, but um, 
the life lesson I've learned is when you are young, you, you try to understand stuff. You try to figure things out. And the older you get, you realize you just simply can't figure things out. And I can't really worry that much about tomorrow because I don't know. I haven't got a clue what tomorrow brings. And and I understand this. And I've, uh, I've with the years, you know, and I've now got a lifestyle that says, I don't worry about tomorrow. That tomorrow, worry about itself. Worry about today. Make sure you're right with God today, right now, this moment. Uh, am I am I managing it? No, I'm not. I'm failing at it uh, on a daily basis, but I'm trying. And maybe I'm getting better, maybe I'm not getting better. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Very, very important. Very, very important. Because our understanding is flawed. Um, it's a bit like a frog's perspective. We can only see to the next... Uh, you know, to the next grass stalk, yeah. Um, but we don't know what's behind it, what's behind the lawn. Um, we don't know what's above it very well, you know, or even below us. We cannot see, and, and decisions we take can be, um, I mean, it's like a bit like, where do you work? What job do you do? What do you train for? You know, what do you do? And now when I was a young man, I thought I was brilliant and pretty much everything. Over time, I learned I'm not brilliant. And on the contrary, there are certain things I'm quite good at, and there are certain things I'm not very good at at all. And I learned this over time. And um, and I learned this as well, that uh, if, if I need to work on a project, I need certain people to compensate for my own shortcomings. So a lot of things you learn when you get older. And I wish I had the knowledge I've got now and the understanding I've now, being in my 50s, I would have this in my 20s. I didn't, yeah. and I made a, a lot of mistakes, and I messed up in a in a lot of uh, instances. But uh, but then again, you know, we are dealing with uh, with God, and we are walking with God as Christians. And God knows the mistakes we will do, and He lets us do them. Uh, but still, He will fulfill His purposes for our life if we are willing to to walk with Him. And it says here, in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. And that is really the key. So we need to acknowledge God in our path. We need to, you know, commit choices we do to Him. Pray about this. I mean, I, I remember that, um, um, just to talk about the job situation, I had a, a good career at a college, and the college was merged with another college, and um, we had this um, this game of musical chairs where departments were merged together, and then managers were culled, a culling operation. And so they, they tried to restore the finance of the college. And, and I, I lost the game of musical chairs and my chair was taken by somebody else. You know. So I was unemployed for some time. Um, again, I, I came to a position where I applied for jobs and, and I tried to apply for um, you know, high level jobs and <laughs> they gradually went further down. And as I got desperate to make ends meet, um, I was looking for very low level jobs. And I wouldn't get them. I wouldn't even get the lower level jobs. I could have done, you know, blindfolded. And I was well qualified for, well over qualified for. And I wouldn't even get an interview. Nobody would even even look at me. And it was quite uh, disturbing where you think to you, what now? But then suddenly opportunities opened up and I could see why those applications didn't go anywhere because far better opportunity came up later. And my career shifted a bit from one end to the other and, and it was okay and I could see why God was doing this and I picked up skills in my change of jobs which uh, later on became very important and I could use for the kingdom of God. Acknowledge him in all your ways. That is very important. Acknowledge God in all your ways and he shall direct your path. He shall make it well. He shall put barriers up where you shouldn't be going and he will open up opportunities where they should be opened up. Always know that God knows your needs. He knows what's uh, what's necessary and he will, he will direct you and he will guide you. He will give you good work and a good job. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. Okay. Uh, being wise in your own eyes. That's in uh, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 7. A lot of people are wise in their own eyes and there's nothing more annoying than having somebody who is arrogant, believes, knows it all, can do it all. And maybe they can, but it's, it's still very unpleasant uh, when you are dealing with arrogant people. So it's, um, 
it's important to, you know, for yourself, not to be wise in your own eyes. Always consider other people to be, to have more wisdom, to have more understanding. And, uh, and always be aware that there are massive limitations to whatever we understand. And again, it's for me a thing, um, the older you get, the more you realize how little you actually know and uh, how, you know, insignificant in the scheme of things you actually are. Um, but fear God or fear Yahweh and depart from evil. Yeah. So again, important. Evil is always there. We need to look around us. We can, you know, engage in lies, deception. We should depart from it. Get away from it. Get away from evil. Be truthful. Be right. And fear God. Fear Yahweh. Very, very important. Uh, it, it's something nobody, you know, people don't preach about it a lot these days. It's always a lovey-dovey God, but uh, there's also an awesome God. There's a God who is a God of righteousness and justice. There's a God who will discipline us if we do wrong. And we should, uh, we should fear God. Uh, healing shall be to your navel and marrow to your bones. Anna Yahweh with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. Hmm, very, very important. Personally, I don't, I don't believe that tithing is um, applicable to the church, but I believe that giving is. Yeah. Giving is very, very important. And giving can be in many ways, not just financially. It can be through your presence. It can be through your support, yeah, that you help out um, within the church. I'm not just talking about the organization, the building, not just as well, but beyond that, yeah, that you serve other saints that uh, if saints, like other believers, if other believers are in trouble, that you don't mind to help them in, in many ways. Uh, Anna, Java with your substance, yeah. So, uh, again, what you have and what you are, you should honor God with it. Uh, the first free fruits of all your increase. So if you have an increase, you should not just think, how can I spend it? You know, what's the next big investment or lux luxury item I'm going to get for myself? But uh, how can I, how can I um, honor God with this? With this, you know, the increase you make. So um, should always be something there. So if you, you know, get some pay rise or a good job, if you, you know, have an opportunity to make a bit of money. Um, or you've got time and you can do something. Um, think about how can you honor God? What can you do for the kingdom of God? Pray about it and, and just give it away. You know, give some of it away. Not all, but some. Yeah. Uh, if you do this, if this is your mentality, uh, let's put it this way. Here, I'm just going to highlight this. Um, if you do this and that's your mentality, then um, what will happen is you will be blessed. Yeah? And it says here, your barns shall be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst with new wine. So it talks about, you know, the agricultural thing. You've got barns. If you've got a good harvest, it, it's full and uh, you've got plenty to sell and to, to, to feed off. And like if you've got a vineyard, you know, and you press a the wine, there's plenty of wine coming out. And, and that's what you want, yeah? but it's, it's, um, it's just a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle choice. Um, you should think, I mean, it might be even, you know, silly stuff. Is it time to buy a new Bible? Can you, can you give somebody else a new Bible? Is there a new believer in church who is struggling? Maybe you've got some interesting books or something like that. Maybe you take him to a Christian bookshop and, and, and help him out. But your concern should be a little bit about the kingdom of God, especially when you make money when you've got some substance, you've got riches. Um, how can you honor God with your riches? That should be a question that, that should be in your life. And even if you're a poor person, um, you will have something. And, and I'm sure you will have something. Think about what you have. What can you do with this to honor God? You may have time. You may have strength. You may have knowledge and understanding. You may be very skilled in a certain area of your life. You may be uh, uh, a really good cook. How can you bless God with your skills? And, and, uh, and how can you do this? And, and change your mentality from what can I do to myself? Um, and, and which is okay. You know, you can do some stuff for yourself. There's no problem with that. But, but also think about it. What can I do for God? When you get up in the morning, 
you know, let God's will be done in my life and, and ask yourself, God, I've got all this substance, what can I do for you? Uh, I've got two verses, I'm going to go through this and then I'm going to um, stop here. So one of them is, my son, do not despise the chastening of Yahweh, nor be weary with his correction. For whom Yahweh loves, he corrects, let me just highlight both of them, even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. Okay, so it's a big thing. We go through life, we are Christians, you know, we love the Lord our God, we think everything is correct, and then still we get it in the neck. Yeah, things just go wrong. And, um, and sometimes things go really wrong. And we think, what's now? Yeah. I, I remember a seven-year period in my life, which was just like a desert walk. I was just sort of surviving. I was going nowhere. Yeah. I was this young man, you know, with his great visions and all the stuff I would do for the Lord. And then as I, I got older, it, nothing happened. Yeah. It, it was just complete, you know, I was just existing. I was just a waste of space. That's what I, I thought of myself. Uh, and it was a part of chastening. It was a part of just uh, building character, getting rid of all the the pride and all the rest I had. Um, and, and you get tired of it as well. You don't want this. And it says here, don't be weary of his correction. So if things go wrong and, and you, you think this might be, you know, a chastening of the Lord, um, embrace it rather than to, uh, you know, be weary and be tired of it. And, and the reminder is here is, you know, if God loves you, he will correct you. And the, the Bible talks of us that, that the, the, the judgment of God starts at the house of God. So he will not judge the Gentiles, and he will not give the Gentiles a hard time, but if we do stuff which isn't right, and we, we mess up in a, in, a, in a great way, and we are not willing to receive, you know, to change our ways, then God will judge us, and he will give us correction. He will give us a hard time in the bad ways we are, we are doing. Even as a father corrects a son in whom he delights. I mean, I give you the example. If you are just running around all day doing all sorts of stuff for everybody, and, and I think we all, it happens to us all. And then I'm talking to myself as well at the same time. So, and, and I'm guilty of it, no, no question about it. But running around and just forgetting to take time for God, just to, to spend time with Him, to pray, to invite Him in, into our lives. Um, and we, we just we just don't get it together. We just don't take this time off. We, we just we just don't want to. Sometimes maybe God will put us in a position where we have a lot of time. Maybe we are ill or or sick, or maybe the weather is really bad and we can't get outside. Or maybe the little projects we wanted to do and we were all ready to go for, um, they don't happen. Yeah, they're cancelled. And maybe suddenly we are sitting here with nothing to do. Yeah. Uh, including, you know, being ill and sick and we, we can't get up and we are just in bed. And, and maybe God just wants this time to have this personal time with you because he loves you and therefore he chastens you. He doesn't want to do you any harm, but he wants to correct you. He wants to make sure you go on the right path. You, you don't mess up. And we go right back to the first bit. Don't forget his law. Don't forget God's commandments. Um, you know, to have mercy and truth truth uh, with, with us around our neck, to trust with all our hearts in God and to not lean on, on our own understanding, to acknowledge Him so that He can direct our path, to be humble, you know, not to be wise in our own eyes, to fear God and to depart from evil, um, to honor God with our substance, with, with everything we have. So that's sometimes very, very important. And um, we need to we need to, you know, to walk in, in God's ways. And if we don't, sometimes he chastens us. He gives us a hard time. Yeah. And, and if he does, don't be tired of his correction. So weary, that's the English word they're using, the old English word. For whom Yahweh loves, he corrects. And it's the same as a father will correct his son. I mean... <clears throat> Probably a really bad example, and I'm going to finish with this really bad example. Um, my brother has a dog who is very undisciplined. And uh, right now, because he's in hospital, it's my job to look after his dog. And, and one thing I try to do is just inject some discipline into him um, so that he doesn't jump up when he's not supposed to, that he comes to me when he's supposed to come to me, and um, <clears throat> to sit down when he's supposed to sit, to calm down when he's supposed to calm down. And if he doesn't, 
And, and he's just like a child, plus he jumps around, does all sorts of stuff, he jumps on me and puts his dirty paws on me. Uh, and um, and he's, just, he's just being a dog, but, um, um, but even being kind to him, I, I try to inject it in him, and sometimes I've got harsh words, and the dog gets really scared. Yeah, because I've got a very harsh word, I put a harsh tone in my voice, and he wants to please me, and he um, he then comes and he sits down, but um, but it's not <clears throat> it's not for uh, the problem I've had with him is quite a big dog, and and um, when I took him for a walk, he wouldn't listen, and he he was a danger to others and with that to himself as well. Um, so he needs to understand commands, and he needs to obey when uh, to be able for me to take him out and to take him for walks and stuff like that to be able to do more with him once he he is there i can do more with him and it's a bit like the way god treats us, us as well we need to understand we need to walk with god we need to be able to hear his voice when danger is at hand we need to be able to hear his voice when we do stuff which is really really bad and really wrong so that we stop doing it and that we turn from our ways which are not right before God and we go in the ways God wants us to walk in. So it's very, very important and sometimes discipline is part of it. Okay, I'm going to finish at this point. It's about uh, 40 minutes talk so far. We're going to carry on with chapter um, 3 here in Proverbs. It's an amazing chapter. There's a lot of life uh, guidelines in here. So if you read it, just just get through it digest it you know get those words and taste the um, uh, the wisdom the honey that is uh, injected into it and um, and let it pour over your soul and uh, and it'll be well with you okay god bless and bye-bye from michael here at seismic radio bpn radio and crusader radio bpnradio.com seismicradio.org and crusaderradio.co.uk. Okay, that, that's all the websites. God bless and bye-bye from Michael here. Uh, and uh, hope you enjoy this until we kind of carry on here in Proverbs.